How's it going? Welcome back. Hess Gifford from YNI Recording Academy. And if you ever struggled with EQ, especially with the basics, the fundamentals of EQ, this video is going to be for you. So let's talk about EQ for a second. I'm more going to be talking about the frequency spectrum rather than EQ itself. So an EQ is short for equalizer and it can equalize out the different frequencies throughout this frequency spectrum. So the frequency spectrum, at least in audio, goes from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And 20 hertz is the lowest, lowest frequency range, which sounds something like much, much lower than that. But And then the higher frequencies sounds more like higher sizzlies, which is like more 20K and obviously it's much higher than that. So that's basically the frequency spectrum of the human ear and everything in between is the music that we hear is composed of everything in between. And an equalizer could go ahead and take different bands, which is a, a range of frequencies, and either boost them or cut them. And you can even do specific individual frequencies. So let me show what let me show you what I'm talking about. If you don't know how an EQ works, this is what an EQ looks like. And Basically, this is the frequency spectrum. Frequency spectrum is going from left to right, so 20 hertz over here, and then 20,000 hertz over here, and then we have the gain, which is up and down. So, if I pull the line down at, let's say, what is it, nine, 10,000 hertz, if I pull it down in gain, it will be cutting that frequency, and if I bring it up, it will be boosting that frequency. There's different ways that it boosts the frequencies. It's not only that specific fre frequency. Like I said, it's that frequency's band. So it's that frequency along with a bunch of other frequencies that are around it. And how it boosts or cuts is based on the type of EQ move that, I, that, I, that, that you do. What I just did was a shelf, but the most common one is a bell. And it looks like this. It basically takes that frequency at the height and then a bunch of its friends around it also with it, but not as much. So it's like a gradual bell. That's exactly what it sounds like. And it can, you can boost the bell, you can subtract from a bell. And uh, that's basically how an EQ works. We can get all into the bells and shelves and cuts and filters in a different video. But in this video, I want to show you exactly how the frequency spectrum works. So the frequency spectrum starts, like I said, at 20, goes up to 20,000. And in this video, I just want you to hear the different frequency ranges. In general, we split up the frequency spectrum into six different ranges. We have the sub bass, then we have the bass, low mids, mids, high mids, and then highs. So the sub bass frequency is usually from around 20 hertz to 60 hertz. And then the bass frequency is usually from like 60 hertz to 200 hertz. And then we have the lows, which is usually from 200 to, or, or like the low mids, which is usually 200 hertz to like 500 hertz. Then we have the mids, which is 500 hertz to let's say 2000 hertz. And then we have the high mids, which is 2000 hertz to around 8000 hertz. And then we have the highs, which is 8000 hertz and above. So let me just show you what all these bands, what all these uh, frequency groups sound like. So we'll start with the entire thing, which is all the frequencies playing together. And this is what it sounds like, just a regular song. piano vocals just very very nice um, little demo and the piano is giving us those lo those lower frequencies and the vocals are, are giving us those higher frequencies so as you can see when I play in the freq in the EQ you can see which what the frequency spectrum is looking like you can see what we're taking up so let's just look at the graph for a minute when I'm playing <laughs> So we have the 
graph, we have the lower the lower frequencies are not as prominent, and as we go up, we have the middle frequencies are the most prominent, and then as we keep going, the higher frequencies are still prominent, but they start dissipating as we go. And this is a lot of times how music works. The very, very, very low frequencies and the very, very, very high frequencies are not always so prominent. They sometimes can be, especially in the lower frequencies and like EDM and stuff like that. But uh, let's go through the frequency um, ranges just so you can get a very good idea of what each frequency range sounds like. So the lows or the sub bass would sound like this. And chances are in this song, you're not gonna hear anything because there's not that much sub bass Sub bass is only there when it's put there, like I said in EDM or, or in other songs, when you have a bass that's really layering it down. And also pay attention that if you're listening on laptop speakers or not such great earphones, this, is, this whole video is not gonna work for you. You gotta be on some really great headphones or some really great speakers for this to work, especially for the lower frequencies to cut through. So I'm gonna play it right now. I'm hearing very little out of my speakers, and my speakers are good. I'm hearing very, very, very little. So let me try to exaggerate it so you can maybe get a little taste of what it's supposed to sound like. So if you listen closely, that's kind of what it's supposed to sound like. Now let's move on to the lows. So the lows would be, um, let me get the cue back in place. So the lows would be from, let's say, like, like here. This is what the lows would sound like, the bass. that mostly the bass notes of the piano are cutting through, not so much the higher the higher piano keys and the higher, uh, or the vocals at all. So just pay attention to that. Okay, so the next, the next band, the next group would be the low mids. So that's somewhere around here. the warmth in the track comes you can start to hear some of the vocals and the piano together the higher notes of the piano you can start to hear almost everything right in this spot and this frequency range is really magical because you could start to hear this is where a lot of the information of the songs that we listen to live you can start to hear um, the vocals like i said you can start to hear the the piano and everything and uh, this is where usually where where a lot of the tracks get the the warmthness and the full soundness that that you need, but it's also quite dangerous because sometimes you can make it sound a little bit muddy-ish. So you want to be careful from that. Let's move on to the next uh, group, which would be the upper mids. Um, no, this would be actually the mids, so from 500 to 2K, let's say. Start to hear a lot of the definition, the little, the the actual, like nuances in the song. You can start to hear the vocals really clearly. You can start hearing the syllables and the words very nicely. You can start hearing the the keys played exactly where they where where they would play. So this is where a lot of the definition comes from. Uh, again, really really powerful frequency. But if done too much, it's going to sound a little bit honkily and nasally. Because let's say I boost it, you'll see you'll see what I'm what I'm, what I'm talking about. Aside from the fact that it's clipping, it's sounding like it's coming through a nose. So you got to be careful. Yes, there's a lot of good stuff there, but you got to be careful with that. Again, too 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 little of that, you're also not going to be in a good place because you're not going to have the definition that the track needs. Again, EQ is all about balancing the frequencies. We're trying to balance. We're trying to give the right frequencies that we need. We're trying to get rid of the frequencies that we don't need. That's all EQ is all about. Let's move on to the next uh, the next group, 
So this is the highs, which is around 2K to 8K, and this is a lot. This is a lot of times where you hear the presentness of a sound. interesting and solo let's say I take it away in the track let me take it away you're gonna start to hear that the whole sound just sounds like it's backing up and you lose that like present in your face kind of sound which sometimes you really want <laughs> like under a blanket or like he's like almost there he's like almost at you but it's just not quite quite there now if i add back the frequencies in, in a balanced way sounds beautiful the last frequency uh group would be the the highs and that's just a lot of the sizzliness this is where you get some of that like sparkle if done right done too much you're gonna get a lot of harshness and if you don't have too much of this it's gonna sound a little bit dull but this is where you get that like little like sparkle or air or like brightness that that um, some people like so this is what it would sound like doesn't sound like much on its own but again without it you're gonna be lacking and with too much of it it's definitely be too much and again, as we start getting more and more this way or more and more that way, the human ear starts to drop out. So beyond 8K, 10K, 12K, people start to hear less and less and less beyond 15K. If you're, if you're young and healthy and have a really good ear, then you'll be able to hear from 15K to 20K. Most people don't, um, especially as you get older, the, the frequency gets like less and less and less. And um, that's for upper frequencies. But the same thing goes for lower frequencies. The lower you go, the lower, the, the less the human ear is going to be able to hear. So this is a basic overview of the frequency spectrum. And your job when you're EQing is to just make sure that you're getting what you want and you're getting rid of what you don't want. Don't have too much of a frequency. Don't have too little of a frequency. If you follow that, that protocol, you'll be in a great place when it comes to EQing. All right, more EQ videos to come, and uh, this is just to get your feet wet and to really understand the different frequencies and how the frequency spectrum works, and uh, until next time. But before you go, I want to give you a free gift, my home studio gear guide. This is a gear guide that if, if you want to start a home studio or you want to upgrade your home studio, you're not sure what to get, where to get, what to buy, you're in a budget, don't worry, I got you. I put together an entire list of everything you need to start a home studio or upgrade your home studio, and it's for any budget. There's a few different options for whichever budget you're you're in, so go ahead, download it free from me to you. It's in the link in the description, and until uh, next time.